Welcome to Moments with Marianne. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very empowering show coming right up with special guests, Mark Victor Hansen and Crystal Hansen. And they're here today to share with us their new book, Ask, The Bridge from Your Dreams to Your Destiny. Now, I'm sure many of you already know who Mark and Crystal Hansen are. But for anyone out there that needs a refresher, Mark is probably best known as a co-author for the Chicken Soup for the Soul book series and brand. He has set records in book sales with over 500 million books sold. He's written over 307 books, either authored or co-authored, including The Latin Factor, The Power of Focus, The Richest Kids in America, the miracle in you, just to name a few. Mark is also a very sought after keynote speaker, and he's spoken to audiences of over 7,000 people in 78 countries. Now, Crystal is a business strategist and successful entrepreneur, speaker, and author in the U.S. and China. Crystal is well known as the celebrity coach. She's a certified life coach and wellness nutrition expert whose personal coaching, speaking, CDs and video programs, books and articles have helped people all over the world. Crystal's a member of the International Coaching Federation and founder of the Crystal Vision Life. She's also the founder of Skinny Life, a wellness company, and is the author of Skinny Life, The Real Secret to Being Physically, Emotionally, and Spiritually Fit. So let's welcome to the show, Mark and Crystal Hansen. Well, thank you, Marianne. We're so happy to be here with you. We're delighted. We love books and we love writing the book, Ask the Bridge from Your Dreams to Your Destiny. We think it's going to be the best seller ever that we've had. And we sold a lot of books. You have sold a lot of books, both of you. You're both very great writers. My goodness, I was so excited to hear about this book. Thank you. We, um, you know, the Chicken Soup series has been wonderful, selling over a half billion books. So we're ecstatic. But we think the creator is greater than the creation. And we think we've discovered something in asking that no one else has seen. Hmm. Well, that's real exciting. So why don't you share with us? I mean, what does it mean to ask? So the reason we wrote the book, Marianne, I, we, you know, we are so fortunate to, to meet so many amazing people. And what we started noticing is people kind of fall into two groups. Uh, the first group is likable, smart, often educated, has a great desire, uh, wants great things. And that group are, you know, the, the great achievers are getting what they want. And then the other group are smart, likable, often educated. They want great things for themselves. They have a great desire, but they're not getting what they want. And so we kind of, we would, we do our morning uh, meditation prayer hour together every morning. And we talk about these things and we talk about the people we meet. We'd say, what is the different differentiator? You know, why is it that this, this guy that should be on television, he's so amazing, he's articulate, he's a superstar, but he's barely getting by. And why is it this incredible woman uh, who, who's smart enough to be running a city can, you know, is, is having a hard time even getting a massage client, you know, so mm-hmm. um, it, we, we started questioning that process. And because we do a, a lot of asking ourselves, and we said, you know what it is, it's the ability to ask. Super achievers are also super master askers. And um, we started going back through our own lives, you know, how at pivotal points when we were each down and out at different times, because all of us are at some point. We were able to pull ourselves out of those situations by asking questions, asking really tough, candid questions of ourselves, and then, you know, asking others for help, and then, of course, asking God. And and those are the three uh, areas of of our book. We say the three channels through which to ask are ask yourself, ask others, and ask God. Hmm. I love that. Well, and is that where you feel like most people get stuck? Because I know you start your book off, The Seven Roadblocks to Asking, and we're not going to go through them all. But, you know, I think a lot of times people just, they they probably, and you guys have probably seen this with all the people you work through, they just get stuck in similar areas. Well, our first one is, that, you know, do you feel worthy enough to ask? We've got a great friend, Bob Proctor. And Bob Proctor used to be so scared he wouldn't ask anything because he didn't want to appear to be dumb or stupid or uh, incapable or insecure. So he went through the Navy, then he came out of the Navy, was in a, 
it was a player person in Canada and making $4,000 a year. This is back in the 60s, and he owed 6000 He said, this isn't working. So he went and asked the smartest, richest, happiest person he met. And he said, the rich guy said, well, what do you want? He said, I want to be like you, rich, healthy, and happy. And he said, well, then here's what you've got to do. And it all changed because he started to ask. And when he asked, he said, well, how do I make some money? And he looked around and said, well, you know, what business could I do and what could I do? And he said, well, I could wash windows. And he started washing windows excessively, making a lot of money, made 25 grand in a couple months and said, holy cow, this really works. Then all of a sudden he was exhausted, fell asleep on, or passed out, actually exhausted on the streets of Toronto, Canada. And the police were surrounding him. When he woke up, he went home to rest. So he asked himself, well, what do I do? He said, well, if I can't wash all the windows, I don't want to wash any of the windows. He started employing other people, started making a, over a million a year. Then he was in Toronto and then Montreal and then Atlanta and then England. And he said, look, asking is the key. And he ke- kept asking. He kept growing. And he's now in his 80s and still growing and doing wildly well, all because he became a master asker. Oh, wow. That's a just what an amazing story. But how true is that? Unless you start asking better questions, you're not going to get better answers. That's right. And it, we say the asking journey starts with asking yourself. It always does because that self-questioning starts to reveal the things you need to understand about yourself to move forward. And a lot of times we just get stuck and we just kind of fall into our stuckness and feel like nothing can change. And that's why we wanted to share this message with, with the entire world because asking is the most simple way. It is the most simple tool you can use to get out of your stuckness and to get your life moving and to get the, the answers that you need and the illumination. Because you, when you start asking yourself questions, Marianne, we, we did a lot of research on this book, and it literally causes a different part of your brain to light up. It is the part where you that does the critical thinking. And so you ask yourself a question and now you're using the best part of your brain and uh, suddenly you see things and you get solutions and you get answers and, and you resolve problems and you see a pathway forward. And the more you ask yourself those questions and write down your answers, the more you start down this literal path to your greater destiny. That's why we, we say, you know, ask, our title is ask the bridge from your dreams to your destiny, because we all have these dreams in our hearts. We want things to work out. We have skills, talents. We have more talent than we'll ever use in a lifetime, but we get stuck. So when you, when you start asking, it becomes the literal bridge that takes you from your dreams to your destiny, because every time you ask another solution, another illumination, another question is answered, you move forward and you move forward. And one step at a time, you start becoming a completely different person. And it is exciting and miraculous. Mm, I love that. Well, you know, I felt that your book really took people to a whole new level. And you address all the reasons that keep people stuck. And one of them, which I was really surprised of, was fear. And it was really amazing to me to see that that was listed there. Well, fear is the prevalent in society. And in 1974, I built a pretty substantial business. I was only a 26-year-old kid in New York City, but I was still living in Hicksville, Long Island, New York. But I was building geodesic domes, spherical buildings made out of triangles because in graduate school, I'd been with Buckminster Fuller for seven years. and I was trying to be him. Now, the problem was that I went upside down so fast. I lost $2 million in one day because I was building out of PVC polyvinyl ploy plastic at exactly the wrong time. Actually, it was my best worst experience. And I'm sure some of the listeners are going through their best worst experience. And the only way you can be a hero is to have probably gone back to a zero and had some problem like I did. But I went bankrupt so fast. I had to check a book on the library. I had to go bankrupt by yourself. And I had to ask myself, what do I do now? And after a lot of soul searching, which is one of those great questions that, you know, you've got to do. I said, well, what I really want to do is I want to be a professional speaker. And then once I did that, people said, well, do you have that story in a book? So I started putting together books and, and, uh, the rest is proverbial history. (laughs) (laughs) I'd say at the least, I mean, my goodness, between the both of you, I mean, the books that you've both written are very astounding. So when this came up, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get my hands on it. 
<laughs> thank you. Well, thank you, Marianne. And we do think, especially for these times, it is it is it was the most important message we could share right now. And it, it's just coming up at this perfect time because, you know, the world is uh, is a little crazy right now. And mm-hmm. instead of you know when these things happen, it, it's tempting sometimes for us to just kind of collapse and and cave into the to the fear and the uncertainty. But I think if we stop and look at this differently as a time to become better, you know, the world is going to slow down. I mean, a lot of people are having to stay home and rework things and spend more time with their families. But it's also a time to go inward and say, how can I learn to be a better asker during this time? How can I prepare? Because the world will come roaring back. It always does. And what if we took this time to just become better prepared to be a better, much better version of ourselves. And the way we can do that is to learn to become better askers, to be master askers in our lives. Mm, I love that. Well, and I think a lot of times too, because people get so overwhelmed, a lot of times they just accept the, you know, like where they're at without going, gosh, you know, what would the better version of myself look like? Exactly. I do want to talk about the imagine what we challenge people to do in terms of asking themselves in the best case scenario. Yeah. What would it be like if you were the ideal you, if you were living in the assumption of the wish fulfilled? Like when I was bankrupt and upside down and I literally wanted to kill myself because I thought my net worth and my self-worth were the same. But I started, luckily, I'd sold my way through college. Somebody had given me an audio tape by the dean of speakers, Cabot Robert, called Are You the Creature of Circumstance? or the creator. And when I listened to it and I got that, that I had created this, I thought, Oh my gosh, if I created it, I can uncreate it. I can recreate it. I can make it wonderful. I can make it exalted. And, you know, over the last 44 years of as professional speaker and writer, um, it has been beyond my imagination and dreams. And what we want to do is source everyone to becoming a master asker now because everyone knows the line, ask and you shall receive, but no one's ever been given instruction on uh, the how-tos, and that's what we put together for each and every person. Uh, so it, the imagination comes alive, and we can work out what our ideal future is going to be for yourself and for the world and for your family and for your charity and for your business. Isn't that the truth? My goodness. <laughs> and, and, I mean, you even have a section in your book where it talks about, you know, you know, because we're kind of going through this, you know, phase right now where people are feeling isolated. So, like, who do they ask? Right. Oh, and it, you know, it is a tough time because we're being told to isolate, you know, and separate. But we still have our core people. We still have our families, right? And now more than ever, we need to to rely on each other. We say that, and this is the asking others part, Marianne, that we are each other's greatest resource. And so even though, you know, for health reasons, we're isolating from big groups of people, more than ever, we need to be a resource to each other. Um, and, and it is sad, like in the world we live in today, we, we talk about this in the book, like, are we too isolated to ask? Because everything's done through, you know, uh, the web and the internet, and we're as much as we're like, connected, um, in a way by social media and other things, we become we've become very disconnected at a deep and real level. And so we really encourage people to take the time to be together and spend time together. Now, obviously, we're in a strange time, um, but we still have our families. And so taking the time to ask each other, you know, um, we all need help. We all need direction. We need support. Sometimes it's just asking someone what their ideas are about a certain situation. That alone, you know, getting those answers and getting that support can lift someone up just tremendously. It can make all the difference in the world because so many people feel lonely right now. We're, we're just hearing these reports about so many people, you know, even, and and not just from this situation, but, you Mm -hmm. know, in the past few years, I think life has taken on such a rapid pace and people don't feel genuinely connected and asking connects us together. And it's, and it's a very important thing for society to be for human beings to be a resource to one another. Yeah, without a doubt. And I mean, you're so right. I mean, they talk about this, you know, epidemic where people are feeling great isolation. And I I feel like your book really helps people that maybe are feeling that going, gosh, you know, how can I approach life differently? 
Well, yeah, when it, back in 1974, when I went upside down and I was living in Hicksville and Long Island, New York, and I was mm-hmm. hiding under the sheets and I was afraid of every telephone call would have been another bill collector saying, uh-oh, you're not paying us and this didn't work out right. And I was scared for my own life. But then all of a sudden, when I started sculpting myself with the questions that Crystal and I are talking about, I said, well, what do I really want to do? Well, I want to talk to people that care about things that matter, that would make a passionately purposeful difference on into their future and everyone else's. And I said, I want to be a speaker. And I went, there are four guys living together in Hicksville, Long Island, New York. And I asked my best friends for help. I said, any of you know a young speaker that's not a cotton top, a white haired older person, that's not a celebrity, that's not a medical doctor, that's not a lawyer. And and one of my roommates was in real estate, John, and he said, Yeah, he's talking at Hawpaw going out in New York at nine o'clock. It was eight thirty in the morning. That's how fast God works, right? So when you start asking questions that are deep, penetrating and massively on purpose. You know, by nine o'clock, I was in awe by this guy. And then I said, well, how do you do this business when it was all done after three hours of mesmerizing an audience? He was four or five years older than I am. He told me how to do the business. He said, you stay out of real estate and do just life insurance talk. You know, and I started doing talks the next day to five or 10 people in an audience. And it just kept getting bigger and better and stronger and more passionately purposeful. And it built a business. But I asked him to help me. That's the point. I asked myself what I wanted to do. Then I asked him. And every night I prayed to God. I said, God, please let me reveal how I can do this business and make it t- omni successful, all successful for myself, the audience, and the companies that are kind enough to hire me and pay me. Mm, I love that story. My goodness, you know, it just it just shows what people can accomplish if they really put asking as part of their practice. It sure does. And you know, Marianne, one other thing I wanted to talk about is we did a lot of research. For the book and um, there, there's been a lot of studies done on this and asking people, people think, okay, and this was even part of the study, people think that they shouldn't ask questions. People are averse to asking questions. They feel like in the study, they found out that people thought, well, if I ask too much or I'm going to appear to be like, like stupid or uninformed mm-hmm. uh, or not on top of things, the study revealed it is Harvard did the study. It's just the opposite. So when you're in a situation with anybody, whether a business, relationship, the more questions you ask, they found, the more likable you were to be, you were to the person that you were with. So asking questions, and and I believe this because it it just makes you more human. I mean, and also having a curiosity about, about someone is very appealing. It's very flattering to ask someone questions or ask their help or advice. That means you trust them or you have confidence in them or you believe in them to, to give you some help or advice. So it, there's just a beautiful exchange that happens between two human beings when asking and answering is going on. It creates this unbelievable bond that you otherwise cannot get. You cannot achieve without asking. And the other thing, they even showed, they even t- tested it with daters. And those people who went on dates and asked more questions um, were lo- more likely to get a second date. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's pretty unbelievable, right? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, but that just shows the power of being able to be vulnerable and, and ask questions. Because if people are concerned or afraid to ask you know, it's, they probably don't even know where to start. Well, exactly. When Crystal and I uh, met, you know, she attended a seminar I was at called Author 101 in Los Angeles. Her mother, Beverly, who I did not know, said, Ann, Mark Victor Hansen's going to be there. But she you attended. You got to go. You got to go. So <laughs> luckily she was there. That night at the VIP reception, I've got throngs of people around me and they're asking me all these questions. But She's on the opposite side of the room, and some lady inadvertently spills red wine all over her white pants. Oh, no. And I, oh, I wanted to come to the rescue, so I ran out to her, and I said, hey, look, I know exactly where the club soda is. Come with me. Once we got outside, I said, it's like 930 at night, and I asked her, I said, um, have you eaten yet? And she said, no. I said, are you hungry? She said, yes. I said, uh, we've got to go off property because there's like a thousand people here that want to ask me a two minute question on how to write and make their book a bestseller. Can we go somewhere else? We arrive at this great restaurant after a little bit of discussion and it's a Hollywood restaurant. 
throngs of people are in line outside and I can't get in with a hundred dollar bill. And I thought, wow, it's nine thirty at night. This isn't like a good idea. So we go up and because my beloved wife is gloriously beautiful, Thank you, <laughs> the maitre d' <laughs> says, uh, okay, I give up. Who is she? And I always ask a question. I'm a salesman, right? The marketer. I said, you don't recognize her? <laughs> now his head's gone nuts. He didn't know what to do with that. Oh he said, gosh. okay, I give up. Who is she? I'm joking because we're both Danish. I said, she's a queen of Denmark. He first says, she's not. He says, oh my gosh, she is. Who are you? I said, who travels with a king? Queen. He said, the king. <laughs> and and we we're in like that. It was just amazing. And now we're in this story and, and and in front of everyone else. <laughs> but it was, it's a magnificent, fun story for us. Oh, that is so not- that is the sweetest, uh, the sweetest start of a love story. My goodness, you know. <laughs> well, we just we believe in asking, and it, it you know if, if we don't demonstrate it, we can't get anyone else to demonstrate. And we want everyone to become master askers. And with your permission, I'd like to ask every one of our listeners uh, to do something. Is that okay? Oh yes, we'd love that. Okay, so our publisher tells us the only you know eighty percent of all books today are sold at Amazon. Given that new reality, what are you going to do about it? Well, he said you got to sell 20,000 pre-sales, pre-ordered before the book comes out. Here we are just a short time before April 28th when a book is officially released and all books come out together. We're asking everyone to get a copy, go to Amazon and get a copy of Ask, The Bridge from Your Dreams to Your Destiny. And if you'll send us a copy of your receipt to reception at markvictorhanson.com, We'll do two things. One is if you buy one book, we're going to tell you about all the seminars we're going to be doing around the country and, and invite you to them and, and other podcasts and, and I'll invite you to ask questions to us and all kinds of good stuff. Mm-hmm. And if you buy a hundred books and what astounds us is we had universities buy it, like Life University has bought it for everybody in their graduating class that's coming up here, assuming they get to have a graduating class. <laughs> they, they've still got the books in any case mm-hmm. um, and they'll get them, I'm sure. The point is that if they also send a receipt to reception of Mark Victor Hansen, you get a whole day seminar here in Arizona with us where we live. And then at night, we're coming back to our home in Scottsdale, Arizona, and feeding them graciously and, and elegantly. And it will be great fun for everyone who does that. Oh, my goodness. It sounds like such a great opportunity. I'm so glad you were able to share that with us. Well, it's unusual, but we're in an unusual time that you've got to ask, and we're you know, historically, when Chicken Soup started, and after 144 people that I asked to buy it, publishers all said, "Hit." I was writing with Dr. Jack Canfield. They said, "Hit the road, Jack." And I said, "Look, it's okay if you don't like Jack, but I'm a nice guy. <laughs> Actually, Jack's wonderful. I'm just teasing here." But we got turned down 144 times. We finally got the little publisher after our ed- our agent had fired us. We had a little oh, publisher, okay. HCI, Health Communications, take us. I didn't know they were bankrupt at the time. <laughs> and we sort of made them successful again. And we, pre, we again, we pre-sold 20,000 copies from the platform. And Crystal will do, if you don't mind, one little quick story about uh, Charlie Green. Oh, oh, we have the greatest guy. We submitted a story for our book. His name's Charlie Green. And he knew Mark back in the day when Mark was one of the well-known speakers at the time. And Mark had been speaking at Charlie's. He was speaking at Charlie's uh church that day. And he said, I'll never forget, you know, Mark Victor Hansen gave this incredible talk and he stood up and waved this manuscript around and said, he said, this is my new book, our new book called Chicken Soup for the Soul. And I, we need to get this published. So I want you all to pray with me that this is going to, I'm asking you to pray that this book gets published. And I'm also asking you to fill out an order form and put your credit card down so that when we do get it published, we will mail you a copy of the book. And Charlie said, I'll, I'll be darned if everyone didn't fill out that order form because Mark asked them to. But, you know, it's just that kind of old, bold asking that I think is so important for us to remember. I and mean, we have nothing to lose. And I think, honestly, people do like to support one another. You know, as human beings, we have a section in the book called Become a Grantor of Wishes. And that's the other side to asking. It's it's all about, you know, being privileged enough to grant someone's request because that's what being human is about. It's about the law of giving and receiving. And uh, the more we do that, we truly believe and we've seen it in our lives. Uh, we love to give um, because you cannot give enough away. It comes back to you tenfold. And when you help others, when you do things from your heart, 
Um, when you can be a grantor of wishes, it is just miracles unfold in your own life, whether you're doing, you know, not, you don't necessarily have to be doing it because you want things. It's that you're doing it for the joy of, of being, you know, part of that circle of giving and receiving and being a grantor of wishes to others. You know, and what a perfect time it is for something like that. You know, we need more people who not only can ask, but also be there to, you know, give and receive. Well, yeah, it exactly. turns out that, you know, one of the reasons I sell more books than anybody is I tithe. Uh, you know, I believe there's four kinds of tithing. Your thinking, your time, your talent, and last but not least, your treasures. And we've tithed in every book I've ever written. And, and on this book, we're tithing to an organization that just we're so in love with these two birth angels. 60 years ago, these two 84-year-old ladies created a little organization called childhelp.org, childhelp.org. And what happens is they were superstars on television. And unless people are baby boomers, they wouldn't remember Ozzy and Harriet, but they were on the show every week. And in a lot of other shows, they're with Bob Hope on a USO tour. They see all these kids shivering out on the street one night when they went out after one of their shows to the military and, and, and Japan. And, and uh, they took them back to the Ritz because nobody would adopt them. Then they went to all the orphanages and nobody would adopt them because they're mixed breed kids they are made by American soldiers. So they went to this one little orphanage with Mrs. Kim and said, hey, look, if we build your orphanage bigger so you could hold these kids, would you take them? And said, well, how are you going to do that? So they went back to the military, appealed to our great soldiers and said, look, some of your brethren, some of your fellow soldiers have created these kids and left them here unbeknownst to them. In most cases, uh, she will take care of them and we'll get them adopted. You've got to build this bigger. Well, all the soldiers, 50 guys all rolled up their sleeves when we built the place, made it bigger, made it better. And did it well. That started it. Now we've helped 10.5 million kids. And Chris and I are currently co-chairman of uh, Child Help, along with two other people, and doing a great job figuring out what can happen. And Crystal will talk to that. Well, it's uh, the 60th campaign is just a huge effort that Child Help's doing to um, expand their services so that they, basically they can reach the entire world with it and do a big international training center. Um, because they have created literally the best practices around the world um, in dealing with abused children. And um, they have, you know, advocacy centers and villages here. So, yeah, it's been a fun effort to do that kind of giving, and, and we're happy to do it. And it takes a lot of time. When we first got involved, Mark's like, I'm not sure if we're going to have time for all this. But, you know, it's amazing when you say yes to helping. It's almost like time expands for you. We feel like opportunities have expanded. Um you know, you can't ever give give yourself away. You end up getting back so much more than you're giving. It's really wonderful. Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. And and you know, what's great is you know people can feel good about buying a copy of Ask because not only are they learning about something for themselves, they're actually helping a great organization. That's right. Yep, because we're tithing um, the proceeds to the organization. Um, we love doing it. As well as giving just a ton of our time, um, you know, if we had to classify the time we're giving, it would be a lot. But it, but it's it's so wonderful. It warms our hearts, and uh, and our goal, Marianne, is to really help people um, learn these tools of asking because you know we all get stuck. We get stuck again and again, and we will continue to get stuck in life. But what we realized is asking is the most simple tool we can teach to people because when you're stuck. You're in a frenzy. You just you just are collapsing sometimes into yourself, and you don't know you're with fear, and, and you're you're not thinking. And if you can learn to use these simple tools of asking, you literally you can ask your way out of these dilemmas and continue to get the solutions, the answers to the problems, the movement forward that you need to keep going, and not just to keep going, to create something brand new that you otherwise wouldn't have thought of if you didn't understand this process. So we felt like this was the best gift that we could give to people. And we're just, we want to create millions of master askers and we want to go along, you know, this journey with you. We want to be there for people and and share, you know, share like a family, share stories and, and share outcomes. It's it's important that we do this. Oh yeah. I, I really felt that ask was really a game changer and what's great. It's, it helps with, yeah, you know, like relationships and it talks about finance. So we've covered some of that and health and all these areas that people wouldn't even think about. 
Exactly. What happens is there's a, the symbol everybody knows is sort of a circle that's got a little S in it, and it's the yin and the yang. And what it means is crisis and opportunity. And crisis always creates opportunity. And seeing as we're in the biggest crisis ever, we have also the biggest opportunity to serve. And once you decide to serve and serve greatly, because all of us have the power to serve greatly. The master teacher said, you know, when the disciples came and said, well, how do you become great? And he says, the greatest amongst you is servant of all. So if you decide, like Martin Luther King said, a janitor could decide to serve greatly and escalate him or herself up the hierarchy. And that's true for each and every one of us. And right now, we've got these gloriously big problems. And uh, being of Danish descent, the Danish poet laureate is one of my hero writers, uh, one of many, but as Dr. Pat Hine, also a Nobel Prize winner. And Pat says, what the world needs now is problem solvers galore, because each problem we solve creates 10 problems more. <laughs> and, and so we've got all these wonderful problems, but we are all, what Crystal was saying about when you learn to ask, you alight, ignite parts of your imagination, parts of your intuition, parts of your ingenuity. And that's what will come out of this crisis. People that are brave and stronger and freer and better than ever. Mm, I love that. My goodness. Well, my goodness, Mark and Crystal, I mean, gosh, we could talk with you guys all day long. You're such inspirations. Why don't you share with us one more time where our listeners can go to be part of your community and learn more about the work that you're doing? Yeah, so um, connect with us at uh, reception at markvictorhanson.com. We really like to connect to people by email and stay stay close to people. Um, you can buy the book, obviously, on Amazon, amazon.com. Um, if you are one of those people that wants an invitation, um, if you have, you know, a business or a company or, a, a, you know, group that you want at church charity, you want to buy more than 100 books for, go to bulkbooks.com and look for the book, ask. Um, you get a discount for buying those. And if you do, under in any case, send us the receipt and we will send you an invitation to this amazing day we're going to spend together. Um, for those who are buying 100, more, we're going, 100 books or more, we're going to have this incredible one-day event that ends with a dinner at our house. And uh, just send those receipts to reception at markvictorhanson.com. Um, it's going to be exciting. We're going to launch this decade with, um, you know, a whole bunch of master askers. So we look forward to hearing from everybody. Connect with us on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Crystal Dwyer Hansen is D-W-Y-E-R. It's kind of a tongue twister. And then, of course, Mark Victor Hansen. Um, you probably know how to spell that. <laughs> 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 yeah, but we, we love to stay in touch with, with everyone. So. Yeah, by the way, I never did three names to be pompous or pretentious. There's just Denmark means Demark, so Hanson is like Smith, so there are lots of Mark Hansons. I mean, everywhere, everywhere. You probably know others than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's only one Mark Victor Hansen, okay? So we know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you both so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. We're delighted. Our we pleasure. thank you for letting uh, inviting us on. Thank yeah, you. Thank you for doing such a great show. We love it. Oh my goodness, Crystal and Mark, it's been such an honor to spend this time with you and of course to talk about your new upcoming book, Ask. Now I know you can go to Mark's website at markvictorhanson.com and there are options to go ahead and pre-order the book on Barnes & Noble or Amazon and of course to connect with both Crystal and Mark. It sounds like they have a fabulous giveaway coming up when you purchase more books and what a great opportunity that is also to learn how to ask. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You're listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. Your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary. 
a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Mary Ann will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just what moment will change your life forever. Moments with Mary Ann airs every Friday and Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.